animal viruses, the updated PowerPoint. Um, the first one was kind of an introduction to the challenges in studying animal and human viruses. The second video we started on the steps of um, virus replication. So the second video was on attachment or absorption. The third video was on entry, how the viruses, three different way viruses get um, their nucleic acid into the cell. So remember it was direct penetration, membrane fusion, and endocytosis. And now folks, this, um, the, this video, the fourth video, will be on synthesis. So how do the viruses get the host cell to synthesize copies of the viral genetic information? Um, how does the virus get the host cell um, to make proteins. So we have to talk about viral genetic information replication and then the process of transcription and translation. And this truly, you guys, it could take a lifetime of study. So I'll try to simplify it while still keeping some of the cool details. Um, th it, it's amazing what viruses can do in our cells. They're so adaptable, so no wonder they're so successful, right? Okay, so folks, just the overview here with synthesis. Synthesis. So in general, where would you where would you see the viruses being replicated? And always remember, you guys, there's never um, clear rules for viruses. So usually, most RNA viruses will be replicated in the cytoplasm. But remember, viruses love to break rules. So um, without going into a lot of detail, you guys, influenza viruses are different. Um, influ influenza viruses are RNA viruses, but they actually have a stage in replication where um, synthesis is occurring in the nucleus. It's crazy. Okay. And then again, in general, you guys, most DNA viruses will replicate in the nucleus, especially if they have to use host DNA polymerase. That's where the host DNA polymerase will be. But again, you guys, viruses love to break our rules, so not all DNA viruses are going to replicate in the nucleus. So just remember that. Viruses love to break our rules. So what we'll do, you guys, is we'll just try to concentrate on three basic steps in viral replication. How is the viral um, nucleic acid going to get copied? Um, how is how will the transcription and translation producing viral proteins, how will that get accomplished? Okay. And again, folks, this gets really thick, especially up here. So just hang in there with me and I'll try to I'll try to remember to say this is this is the question I like you to be able to answer um, at the end of the these slides. Okay folks, so um, the first thing we'll talk about is how will the virus get its nucleic acid copied. And again, this is going to depend if they're a DNA virus or an RNA virus. So let's first take a look at DNA viruses. So a DNA virus, it has to make copies of its viral DNA. So the enzyme it would use for that would be DNA polymerase. Now, the DNA viruses, they have an advantage because they could use the host cell DNA polymerase, right? Because... Um, our cells, for example, um, in our nucleus, we have DNA polymerase to make copies of our chromosomal DNA. So a virus could use the host cell DNA polymerase, but some viruses, you guys, will actually encode their own viral DNA polymerase. Okay. Now, where it gets really thick is when we're talking about RNA viruses. Okay, so RNA viruses have to make copies of their vi viral RNA, and this is tough, you guys, because in a in a later slide, we'll talk about how our um, our RNA polymerase, so cellular RNA polymerase, right, that would make say messenger RNA or tRNA or rRNA for our cells. Our cellular um, RNA polymerases use DNA as a template, right, to make RNA. But RNA viruses, um, their template would be their RNA genome. So the RNA viruses have to have an enzyme that can use RNA as a template to make complementary RNA. And such an enzyme, you guys, it would be um, officially called an RNA-dependent. RNA-dependent means an RNA template is used and RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And RNA polymerase is telling us that the enzyme is going to make RNA. So our cells lack RNA-dependent RNA polymerases. So for this reason, viral excuse me, RNA viruses have to encode information for their own viral RNA polymerase, their RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And they have to, um, well, 
Okay, we'll, we'll leave it right there for right now, you guys. So remember, RNA viruses, they have a special challenge. They have to supply this um, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase so that they can have their RNA copied. And these cartoons, you guys, they may or may not help, but just it, it's just a little schematic of all the different um, processes involved in DNA virus and RNA virus copying the genetic information and then carrying out transcription and translation. So then viral transcription, folks, this would be when the viral nucleic acid acts as a template to, to make for um, viral mRNA, okay? So the transcription could be carried out by a host RNA polymerase if the virus um, has DNA's, the genetic information, it could use the host RNA polymerase to transcribe the viral DNA into messenger RNA and then it would be translated um, but but the product again, you guys are those RNA viruses, so they can't use the host RNA polymerase, right? Because the host RNA polymerase uses um, DNA as a template. So again, here you guys, the RNA viruses will have to supply their own RNA dependent RNA polymerase that can use RNA as a template to make um, messenger RNA. Okay, so I know this is a little bit crazy here, guys, but here's an example. So here's an RNA virus, the RNA virus genome. And here's the viral RNA-dependent RNA polymerase that would use the viral RNA as a template to make complementary RNA here. Okay. And um, gosh, you guys, um, let me just throw in here right now, when we're talking about single strands of RNA, we there's two types of single-stranded RNA positive sense. So here's a plus strand positive sense RNA acts as mRNA, meaning that ribosomes can bind to it and translate it, right? Now the complement of positive sense RNA is the complement <laughs> negative sense RNA. Okay, so um, try not to worry too much about this. I have a table that's coming up and we'll find out that um, this is actually going to be a bonus question on um, lecture exam three. Okay, the positive and negative sense RNA. All right, you guys just going back up here. So viral transcription, the product, regardless of which enzyme is used, host RNA polymerase or the viral RNA polymerase is going to be viral mRNA. And remember you guys, the viral mRNA, this is what the ribosome, the host ribosomes will bind to and translate into viral proteins. I think you guys, I did reorder your slides because I, I was going to break up this audio, um, these audios into synthesis. So I move the next two slides, which are bonus topics, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, this is going to be a bonus topic for lecture exam three. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, just, just skip it, right? Okay. So um, this, th it's a nice table, you guys, comparing the strategies for animal viruses. So remember the viruses are divided into DNA viruses and RNA viruses. And furthermore, you guys are divided up into whether they're double-stranded DNA viruses or single-stranded DNA viruses. The DNA viruses have it pretty lucky, right? Because they can basically use um, the cellular DNA polymerases and um, cellular RNA polymerases if need be. But the problem is, remember you guys, we said with our um, RNA viruses, now there's, there's three groups here, you guys. There's the positive sense, single-strand RNA viruses. Let me just skip the retroviruses, HIV for right now. And then the negative sense, single-strand RNA viruses. So let's just focus on this... Um, positive sense, single strand RNA virus. Here's our coronaviruses, you guys. So coronaviruses are positive sense, single stranded RNA viruses. Okay, so let's jump down here, you guys. So you might recall the positive sense that plus single strand RNA acts as mRNA, right? So as soon as coronavirus gets its RNA genome into our cells, the coronavirus um, RNA acts as a guide um, excuse me, gosh, you guys, so sorry. The, the positive sense single strand RNA of the coronavirus, it acts as mRNA. So our ribosomes bind to it and start immediately, immediately synthesizing coronavirus, um, viral proteins. Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> but then, <clears throat> but then the, um, <clears throat> the question would be folks, <clears throat> excuse me, how would the coronavirus make copies of this positive sense single-strand RNA? And that's where the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase comes in. 
So the viral RNA dependent RNA polymerase uses the, the positive sense strand as a template to make complementary negative sense RNA. And then this negative sense RNA acts as a template to make more positive sense RNA. So that, that's how the coronavirus um, positive sense single strand RNA would be made. And again, what's the enzyme? It's going to be the RNA dependent RNA polymerase, which the virus encodes information for. Our cells don't make that. And again, you guys down here with the negative sense single strand um, viruses, once they get their genome into the cell, the viral RNA dependent RNA um, polymerase would make a complementary RNA copy, make the positive sense RNA, and that's going to act as mRNA to make the viral proteins. And then, um, and there, there we go, right there. Okay, okay. So this would act as mRNA, and then this. This positive sense RNA will act as a template to make more of the negative single strand RNA, the genomic um, RNA. And this is this is uh, our influenza viruses. They're negative sense single strand RNA viruses. So again, the point here is the viruses have to encode the information for their own RNA dependent um, RNA polymerase. And sometimes they they they'll call that viral transcriptase. <clears throat> okay, folks. So I know that's so confusing. So uh, let's look at a table that would, if we were really into virology and we really wanted to be um, really exact in communicating what type of DNA or RNA polymerases are we, t are we talking about, there's a, a convention to name DNA and RNA polymerases so you know exactly what's the template and what is the um, product. So you guys, this would be bonus for lecture exam three, but again, as virologists, Knowing this naming system just makes communi communication so much easier. So you guys, let's just let's test this out. Okay, so you guys, if we're talking about any kind of cell, right? You, me, bacteria, the cellular DNA polymerase. What is the cellular DNA polymerase template? Okay, it's single strand DNA, and then what is it going to make? What's the product? So the DNA polymerase will make complementary single stranded DNA. So now let's use the convention for giving the accurate name. So you guys, the template tells us that, excuse me, the, the template is the first part of this name. So DNA dependent, dependent is telling us what's the template. So DNA dependent tells us the um, template for the enzyme is DNA. And then the second part of the name, you guys, tells us what does the enzyme make. So DNA polymerase. So you see the DNA template. DNA is made DNA dependent DNA polymerase, all right? Now cellular RNA polymerase, what, what is its template? Its template is DNA, right? So we're going to call it DNA dependent. What does it make? RNA, right? So cellular RNA polymerase, like your RNA polymerase, um, my RNA polymerase, a bacteria's RNA polymerase would be called DNA dependent. And that's a template RNA polymerase. That's what it makes. Okay. Now you guys, this is where the naming gets a little trickier. So if we're, if we're talking about an RNA virus RNA polymerase, again, sometimes called viral transcriptase, what is the template? The viral RNA. What does it make? Complementary RNA. So these viral RNA polymerases are called RNA dependent RNA polymerases. Okay, does that make your head spin? Okay, well, just wait. And again, you guys, this would totally be bonus questions on lecture exam three. Let's look at retroviruses like HIV, right? Remember, HIV is an RNA virus. It gets into our cells, and it's going to carry out that amazing process called reverse transcription using its amazing HIV reverse transcriptase. So in step one of reverse transcription, the HIV RNA is the template, and what does the HIV reverse transcriptase make? It makes DNA. That's crazy, you guys. So in step one... The HIV reverse transcriptase is acting as an RNA dependent, that's a template, DNA polymerase. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely nuts. Now in step two, you guys, and I won't ask you about step two, this is even crazier. The reverse transcriptase then uses the DNA it just made. Where, where's my cursor here? The DNA it's just made, it uses that as a template to make the second complementary strand of DNA. So there's actually two steps in that process, and the result is the HIV RNA information gets converted into double-stranded DNA. We'll call that the HIV provirus 
and that HIV provirus gets inserted into our chromosomes, and once it gets in there, we can never get it out. Okay, so you guys, I know that that was thick as fudge. I know that was tough. Um, so let's keep going here. I think this might be almost the last um, slide for viral synthesis. So you guys, so now through transcription, we have our viral MR mRNA, and now the host ribosomes are going to attach to the viral mRNA and translate it to make viral proteins. So remember, you guys, if it's a um, if it's a eukaryotic cell, host cell, so animals, humans, it's our our ADS ribosomes that will translate the viral mRNA into the viral proteins, and the viral the viral proteins can be made by ribosomes in two locations. So the viral proteins can be made by um, our cytoplasmic ribosomes, ribosomes that carry out translation in our cytoplasm, or the viral mRNA may be translated by ribosomes that are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and this is how some of the coronavirus proteins are made. The envelope proteins are made by ribosome, excuse me, ribosomes attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And those envelope proteins, like the, the, that S protein, the spike, and the HE, the co-receptor, they're inserted into the membrane of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is so wild, you guys. And then, I don't know if we can see it here, but then the, um, the coronavirus, they bud, they bud stealing the endoplasmic reticulum as their envelope here, and through this amazing process, you guys, of exocytosis, right? The viruses are carried in a membrane-bound vesicle to the cytoplasmic membrane. This, um, this vesicle then fuses with the cell membrane, and that releases the coronavirus to the outside. Isn't that crazy? Okay, enough. I think, I think that was exhausting. You might have a headache now. So what we'll do, folks, is we'll stop this um, audio here, and then we will... We'll finish. Let's see. We're going to finish um, the replication looking at viral assembly. I hope that recorded. Oh, I think that might not have recorded. That's a bummer. Okay. Well, we'll just have to. Sorry, technical.